Doing marketing without a plan isn't a whole lot better than gambling, and is a great way to lose a whole lot of money very quickly. Which is why in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down five key components that you need in order to create a bulletproof marketing plan, so you can generate more leads, customers, and sales for your business. Let's get to it. Hey there, my name is Adam Earhart, marketing strategist, and welcome to The Marketing Show. Look, I get it. Marketing plans are boring, and that's exactly why I'm not gonna be asking you to create a 500 page document that's outdated the minute you press print. Instead, I'm gonna be discussing five key things that you can jot down on a single piece of paper and use as a source of reference anytime you wanna launch a new product or service or business or any idea whatsoever. See, over my career, I've done marketing a number of different ways, including marketing with a plan and marketing without a plan. And probably not surprisingly, the marketing with a plan tended to work a whole lot better. And that's what I want for you here. So with all that said, let's dive right into the meat and potatoes of the episode, starting with point number one, market. No matter what kind of business or product or service that you're offering or selling or whatever kind of marketing campaign you're hoping to create, it always starts with the market. In fact, market is so important that it's baked right into the word marketing itself. Ah, oh, see, there it is. This is because marketing is all about communicating value of your product or service or business to your customer, to your market. So without them, you're not really doing anything at all. I guess you're talking to yourself. That's why it's so incredibly important to really understand the wants and the needs and the dreams and the desires and the fears and the pains and the frustrations and all of the aspects and elements of what comprises your ideal target market but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's style it back a few steps first. You see, when it comes to creating truly effective marketing and really building out a solid marketing plan, you really wanna start by identifying that ideal customer avatar. That fictional representation makes up all the characteristics of your best customers, the kind of people that love you, love what you do, wanna tell all their friends and family about just how great you are and you are pretty great, as well as the ones that are happy to pay you for the value you provide. Your job as a marketer, as a creator of the marketing plan, is to try to know them better than they even know themselves because the more empathetic you're able to be and the better you're able to put yourself in their shoes and really understand where they're coming from, well, the stronger all of your marketing is going to be. This is why it's so incredibly important to really identify and really clearly describe the characteristics that make up that ideal customer avatar. So let's do that in three different steps. Number one is you want to identify their demographic details. These are the stereotypical things everybody thinks about when they're creating an ideal customer avatar. Things like age, gender, income, occupation, titles, things like that. Then of course you have their geographic details, like where they live, their city, state, province, country, or maybe even neighborhood, maybe even street, if you want to get really small about it. And then lastly, you have their psychographic details, their attitudes, interests, beliefs, affiliations, organizations, their political viewpoints, their religious background, basically all the stuff that's not polite to talk about at the dinner table, this is the stuff you really wanna dial deep into. You wanna really try to understand where they're coming from, so talk to them. Read what they read, watch what they watch, listen to what they listen. Really try to embody where they're coming from and try to get in again into their shoes and see what they're thinking about and how you can position your business or your product or your service as the solution to their pains. Whoever does this best typically wins. All right, so now that you've got your ideal target market really identified, you know who it is that you're trying to market to, it's time to move on to tip number two, which is all about the model. This is all about what it is that you're trying to sell to them. Basically, whatever product or service or business or offer or idea, whatever it is that you're trying to influence and persuade them to come over and buy. Now, this is gonna sound really obvious, but I want you to stick with me anyways. Essentially, you wanna sell something that people actually wanna buy. I know. I know that's some groundbreaking information, but you'd be amazed at how many consultations or how many audits I do where I'm looking at the marketing and I'm looking at the offer that the business is making to the customer and they're wondering why nobody is buying it. It's because it's a bad offer. This doesn't mean that your business is bad, doesn't mean that your product is bad, doesn't mean your service is bad. It just means that the way that you're representing it, the marketing of it, is bad. This is why marketing is so incredibly important because at the end of the day, it's not the best business that wins. It's not the best product or service that wins. Rather, it's the one with the best marketing that wins. So make sure to spend a little bit of extra time, energy, and money and really dress up the product or the service or the business or even the idea that you're trying to sell. Make sure that it's appealing to the right people, the right people being your ideal target market, and make sure that you're presenting it in the best light possible. Also, when we are talking about model, which we're doing right here, it's important to take a step back and really take a look at the entire customer journey. 
What you want to do here, rather what you don't want to do, is be selling transactional one-off items for low dollars. Think about a pack of gum at a gas station for a buck, where you sell the pack of gum and you never see the person again. Not a great business model. However, if let's say the gas station offered recurring gum subscriptions, or they knew that they were located in a spot of town to benefit from repeat customer purchases or something like that, well then you can see that you're starting to increase the customer lifetime value, which means they're gonna be spending a whole lot more with your business over the course of their entire lifetime. And this model tends to get a little bit sweeter. This is why when you're taking a look at what it is that you're selling, you really want to avoid those transactional, low budget, low dollar one-off items, and you want to move more in in the area of relationship marketing, recurring revenue, subscription services, or something with a high customer lifetime value where you're gonna be able to basically generate more revenue from your customers, but in return, of course, you're gonna deliver a heck of a lot more value too. After all, a business that charges a lot and doesn't deliver anything, they're not gonna be in business for very long. Thanks to the internet. So if you can map out the customer journey and you can start finding areas to offer upsells or downsells or cross sells, or again, those memberships or subscriptions or something that allows you to increase the revenue, well, the better service and the better products you're gonna be able to generate and to deliver in the long run for your customers. The last point that I wanna cover here when we're talking about model is that you always want to be trying to sell a painkiller rather than a vitamin. Meaning, you wanna sell something that solves an immediate need for someone right now, rather than helps them prevent or possibly mitigate some future scenario that people are really bad at anticipating. All right, let's move right along to point number three, which is all about the message. This is why it's so important that we build things out in this order and that you first start with your ideal target market and who it is that you're trying to serve, then you move on to the model and what it is that you're trying to sell them, and then we can get to the message after that, which is how you're gonna wrap this all up and package it in a way that's appealing to that market. The way that I like to present this is one of two ways. The first of which is all about their miseries. This is really uncovering your ideal customer avatars, pains and fears and problems and frustrations and all of the things they're trying to get away from. The second thing is you wanna determine their miracles. This is their wants and their dreams and their desires and their aspirations and everything that they're trying to achieve. Your job as a marketer is to help them bridge the gap away from their miseries and towards their miracles. Now how you do that is through one of two ways. The first of which is with a hard or direct offer. This is for that small group of people, let's say the 3% of your market that's ready to buy right now. They've got credit card in hand, they're ready to make a purchase, they've got the pain and they want a solution. For these people, you can come right out with a hard or direct offer and say what you do, who you do it for, and why they should care. You can afford to be a little more pushy or a little more aggressive or a little more direct and really just give them the solution that they're looking for. No harm done. For the much larger percentage of the market, let's say the 97% who aren't ready to buy right now but are still in that data collection phase, you want to have a soft offer or a transitional offer. The reason marketing and sales get kind of a bad rap as being aggressive or pushy or sleazy or salesy is because so much of the market is trying to cram these hard direct offers down the throats of the masses who aren't ready to buy right now and it's pushy and it's aggressive and it doesn't work that well. This is why you want to have that soft or transitional offer that provides them a little bit of value. It educates them, entertains them, informs them, and helps them in some kind of way that allows you to position your business as the authority and the leader in the space so when they are ready to make that purchase decision, your business is the one that's top of mind. Okay, so now that you've got your market, you've got your model, and you've got your message, now it's time to move on to media. And again, this is where people get things so wrong, is they often start with the media by picking a channel like say YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn, and they hear about just how great it is, so they go all in there, and they completely forget to identify their target market and figure out, are they even active or present on these platforms? Because if not, what are you doing wasting your time there? This is why it's important to go in order. Really determine that ideal target market, figure out what it is you're selling, and then you can start to move on to where are they active and present online, because this enables you to go there and avoid everywhere else. The advice to be everywhere and do everything is terrible advice because your market's not everywhere and they're not doing everything. And that is a quick way to burn yourself out and waste a whole lot of money and energy. Rather, you wanna be strategic and really identify again where they are, where they're present and active online, and then go there and ignore everything else. So 
The way to do this is to first identify that target market and then start to line up and really just do a quick Google search about kind of the key demographic usage details of different social media sites, and it'll paint a pretty clear picture pretty quickly. For example, if you're trying to reach a market between 18 and 24 or 25 and 34, well then this age range tends to favor Instagram and even younger starting to favor TikTok, although it's aging up quickly. If you're looking for a group over the age of 35, well then obviously you're gonna to wanna to take a look at Facebook, which is kind of the behemoth in the space. YouTube is great for reaching pretty much all kinds of different demographics, but it does require being on video or doing some kind of video. So if that's not your thing, then this probably isn't your channel. And if you're in the business to business or B2B space, then there's probably no better player than LinkedIn. All of these statistics are just a short Google search away though. So this isn't proprietary information and you can find it out for yourself very quickly as long as you first know who that market is that you're trying to serve. Also, when it comes to media, you do have a couple different choices typically organic and paid. Organic is any kind of content that you're creating that you're not paying for. And then paid is any kind of content that you are paying for. Again, it sounds obvious, but basically think of organic posting as just creating content and putting it out on the different social media networks. And then think of paid marketing as anytime you're running, say Facebook ads or Instagram ads or YouTube ads. Neither one is better than the other, but organic reach does tend to be declining across all the platforms as they're really saturated. And paid advertising can be really effective, but it's an accelerant, meaning it'll make a good offer and make it perform that much better, that much faster. But if your offer's not dialed in or your market's a little bit questionable, well, it'll make it fail that much faster too. All right, so with all that said, now that we've got everything fleshed out, it's time to move on to the final piece of the puzzle, which is what I call the matrix. This is probably my favorite part of the entire market plan. I call it a social selling system, but that's really just fancy marketer talk for what it really is, which is a marketing funnel or a sales funnel. Now, what a social selling system or a marketing funnel, sales funnel, if you want to be boring about it, is really just a way to guide your customers through the journey of having no idea who you are all the way through the process of becoming lifelong and loyal customers to your brand or business. Funnels are really important and really valuable because they help to guide the prospect through the process of doing business with you. And it really helps to streamline everything so they don't get lost, they don't get confused, and they don't end up at the end of all of your marketing wondering what you do or how you can even help them. A funnel streamlines all of that by giving them a clear, consistent process that they can follow from A to Z, basically enabling them to have no idea who you are and then work themselves through the stages of know, like, and trust. And they can typically move at their own pace, meaning some some people might take hours or days or weeks or months or maybe even years to fully come around and trust you, where other people might see your message, go through all of your marketing at once and be ready to buy just like that. Now, if you've never heard of sales funnels or marketing funnels before, I'll make sure to link up a couple videos in the descriptions below that'll walk you through and get you up to speed very quickly. But here's the premise and the basic overview that I like to suggest. The very first step of any funnel is you need to generate attention and get some kind of traffic. Now, we already talked about organic versus paid, so let's start there. Let's say we're gonna be running Facebook ads or Instagram ads and driving traffic into our funnel. Step two is the opt-in page. This is where all the traffic is gonna be going. And the opt-in page, we're gonna be offering some kind of value in exchange for their name and their email or maybe one or the other. The kind of value we're gonna be exchanging is probably a lead magnet, meaning some kind of cheat sheet or PDF download or blueprint or guide or some kind of value that we can offer to our prospect in exchange for their contact details. Step three is the thank you page plus offer. Now on this page, we're gonna thank them for filling out their information. We're gonna possibly offer the value that we just provided or we could email it to them later. And we're also gonna make the next offer in our funnel, which is typically the offer to get them to start to do business with you, whether it's a sales call or visiting a store or whatever is your highest converting tool in order to turn a lead into a sale. And then the final step after that is email and retargeting. So here we're gonna follow up with email marketing as well as run retargeting ads, which are essentially just advertising that we're running to people that have already gone through the funnel. So they already know us and possibly like us a little bit, which means that our cost per impression or the cost to show these ads to these people is gonna be a lot less and the results are gonna be that much better. The first three steps of the funnel, the traffic, the opt-in, the thank you and offer, well, that takes care of that 3% of people who are ready to buy and take action right now. But the beauty of having the retargeting ads and the email follow-up is it allows us to capture the 97% of people who aren't ready to buy right now, but will be at some point in the future. Again, these are the people that pretty much everybody else ignores just because they're not ready to buy right now. And that's a huge and costly mistake. 
The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is check out the video I have linked up right here on understanding marketing basics for your business. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in the next episode. Why you? Why your business? And what makes you better or different than all?